And that's all the consequence of people not showing up. We are the armed attorneys today. We're talking about caring in polling locations. Early voting has started and election day is fast approaching. And we want to know, can you exercise your Second Amendment rights while exercising your rights at the ballot box? But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And today we're going to be talking about some general you know, guidelines when it comes to caring while voting. We're going to go over the states that expressly prohibit uh, caring in polling locations and just kind of some extra guidelines in the absence of statutory prohibitions. But let's talk about this first. So do you have to disarm generally um, is kind of the first thing that I want to talk about. And we have these locations where, you know, let's say a state doesn't have a law on the books. Um, what are some kind of general guidance you would say maybe that, that you would talk to your clients about? Think about where you're going, right? So is your polling place in a courthouse? Is it in a government building and you live in a state in which you can't carry in a government building? Is it in a school? I mean, I don't worry about these. My polling location a lot of time for a lot of my life was in a, a grocery store. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, sometimes you might have that and that would be totally fine. You know, you're looking at your general rules on grocery stores in addition to whether or not your state has a prohibition. But think about the place not only as a polling location, but you have to bear in mind, what is this place when it's not election season? Because that is also going to make a difference. And I would say the most common example, especially around here, is courthouses or, you know, mm -hmm. offices utilized by courts here in the state of Texas and schools. You'll pro find a lot of schools will be converted into voting locations. And most states have statutory prohibitions in those locations. So, you know, absent some statutory guidance, that's the place you got to look out for. But now we have to move on to kind of our list of states. These are states that have laws on the books saying, hey, firearms may be prohibited in these locations and they vary a little bit and you have to check your law before you go and vote because they might say, hey, the building's off limits. Some of these, they say, hey, you can't go within so many feet of a polling mm -hmm. location. So you got to check your state's law. But what are those states that have a law in the book saying on, on the state level, hey, you can't carry in a, in a polling location? Yeah, let's just list them off. So if you live in one of these states, there is an explicit prohibition on the books. Those states are Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, New York, no surprise there, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia, Washington, D.C. Now, bear in mind, even if you don't live in one of these states, not only do you have to think about what is the building, is it a courthouse, is it a school, but you may encounter just your general trespassing laws. I mean, let's say that it's it's in the grocery store and grocery stores aren't necessarily off limits to you and polling locations aren't off limits to you, but they've got some sort of prohibition sign that would be legally effective of. Right. Or the grocery store manager sees you carrying and says, you can't carry in here. There are those considerations as well. Yeah, and I would say there are some additional considerations. One example that jumps out in my mind is Ohio. You know, there's no statutory prohibition, general prohibition on carrying in a polling location, except they specifically say, hey, poll observers, uh, you can't carry. So there are some nuances to each of these states, and we see that as well with, you know, maybe police officers are exempted from the law. Maybe election judges are carved mm -hmm. out. And so this is just kind of a general overview. We're talking about our, you know, general folks going to go vote in the election um, would you be allowed to go carry in these polling locations generally? So as Emily points out, though, if your state has the, um, you know, effective signage laws that would exclude folks from certain locations, you know, that is something that may come into play now. Um, this is so important because I would say the Second Amendment is on the ballot. It is. And it is every year, but I think now more than ever. Um, and I, you know, we can just look, I mean, very briefly to the state of Virginia. That's I, think. I was th thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. So what happened in Virginia? Yeah. So they have one little, um, one little, you know, tick over to the left side of the aisle and man, did their gun laws get messed up in one election cycle. Oh yeah. I mean, their gun laws are totally different now. Um, and that's all the consequence of people not showing up. Yeah. So, so. it's really important get out and vote, make sure to bring your friends and family to vote. It is an important, it's part of our civic duty and it's part of preserving our second amendment rights. I always think about, you know, those folks, we see these great victories in courts across the country right now in the wake of New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. But man, does it start so much further mm -hmm. upstream if we can stop these bad laws from going on the books in the first place. That's really the place to start. The courts are our last resort. Um, so we want to avoid that if we can. But we hope you enjoy this video. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. 
and leave us a question, leave us a comment. Most importantly, go out and vote. Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.